NHL pugilist Ty Domi of the Rangers promised to retain his hockey heavyweight title against Detroit's Bob Probert. Punches in a minute. First the pucks from the evening. Rangers and Red Wings scoreless not for long. Messier to Adam Gray's backhand top shelf. 1-0 Broadway Blues. Roughly a minute later, Keith Primo has been struggling. Finds Sheldon Kennedy for the equalizer and it's tied at 1. Detroit down 3-2. Opening faceoff. Peer in on it. Third period. Rangers get very sloppy. A bad pass by Wells. Forces the action for the Red Wings. And after Mike Richter makes a couple of saves, Paul Broughton, 37, knocked it into his own net. Game tied at three. Iserman got credit for the goal. Midway through the third, Rangers poke it ahead. Here comes Sergei Nemchinov turning on the Jets. Gets to the puck and beats Shevelday, who went down early in the butterfly. Then watch this empty net goal. Darren Turcott from his own blue line on the backhander. And the Rangers win the game 5-3. Three, their first home win in five games, avoiding what would have been their worst home slump in 16 years. Mike Richter snaps out of a slump with 39 saves. The Wings are winless in their last four. As for the big fight, it was promised. Remember back in February, Ty Domi proclaiming himself with the belt as new heavyweight champion of hockey? Well, he and Probert took just 37 seconds. A little instigating. Let's get it over, guys. Ring the bell. It's underway. Here goes the fight. Probert with the right, connecting on eight consecutive punches before Domi could get ready. Ty trying to answer back with some lefts. In all seriousness, hockey fighting is down, and these guys promised in the press to go after each other. Probert was even said to be meditating in the locker room before the game about the fight. In any case, all three judges at the Garden ringside and our ESPN uh, boxing analysts as well score this fight. Probert, definitely. A decision. Domi does not show the belt. He realizes that there will be a rematch at some point. We do have punch stat on this. We're doing it all here. Uh, the bout going uh, number two to Probert. ESPN has learned the third showdown already set. January 19th. Where else? Joe Lewis Arena. We call in boxing analyst Al Bernstein to analyze. This is a fight I would pay to see. It is a fight in which I almost can't pick a winner, and I'll go so far as to say it's a fight that could produce a rivalry, the likes of which we haven't seen in boxing in a long time. Why? They are mere images of each other. They have the same strengths, the same weaknesses, and they are tough dudes. These guys look at each other. They want to rip each other's head off. <laughs> Here he's got Constantine up with him. Tillinger drives a shot. Going down to block it was Ludwig. And Jim Johnson must have done something to Constantino if he was upset at. They're both going to go, too. Remember Jim Johnson was a thorn in the Red Wings side in that series last year. North Stars come close again at Russ Court. Oh, boy. Between he and Madano, they got speed to burn, boy. Ludwig that went down to block the shot. Chevrolet covers it up. Craig, here he comes very late. And that's what riles everybody up. Just trying to get them to draw a penalty. That's a tough way to play the game, boy, because especially when they don't get a penalty like that. With McCrimmon in front of the net, but the Wings able to clear. Here's Madonna. He goes cross ice, taken by Ellick. He goes to Churla. Churla tried to go back to Ellick, hit a piece of broken stick still laying on the ice. North Stars have it again, but a hand pass. Very alertly, Stewart spotted the infraction there. Don Ellick. A miscue there by Constantino. Coughed it up uh, between the blue line and the red line, and Mike Madano won't miss too often, boy. He just picked his spot, had the eyes riveted on that top corner and he followed it up with a perfect play shot over top of Chevrolet's arm. No chance for a goaltender unless it hits him on a play like that. Then Madano came right back at 340 of the period on a play that he came right down the middle. The shot was taken by Craig, basically just a, a flip up the middle. The North Stars turn it right back the other way. Nobody's got Madano. Picks the rebound off of Chevrolet's pad. Makes a nice move and tucks it in once again. Not much you can do there when you got Madano bearing down on you like Chevrolet did. Back-to-back -back goals for Madano is 11th and 12th. And then Mike McPhee, the former Montreal Canadian, is fifth of the year. A shorthanded goal as Chason and Yves Racine get tied up together at the Minnesota Blue Line. They're taken out by one North Star. McPhee comes in alone, makes a nice fake, and goes underneath the glove of Tim Chevrolet. 
5.05. Three goals for the North Stars. There's your shots on goal. 17-8 in the period. 29-15 overall. And the North Stars lead it by 2.40. And what do we got here? A penalty against the North Stars. A tripping call. And the Red Wings early here on the third, trailing by two, will go on the power play. <laughs> to the net, takes a nice pass from Iserman. He is tripped up in the penalty call by Paul Stewart. There's plenty of time here in a 4-2 game. 16-19 to go, but the Wings have got to get some scoring opportunities against John Casey. Both of the Red Wing goals shorthanded, and both came in the first three minutes of the contest. Tenorti on the loose puck. Plays it up the boards, brought, checked by Lidstrom. Tenorti gets it back. He's checked by Carson. Now Carson in the corner. Trying to get away from Tenorti. Now slapped away by Hatcher. Recovered by Burr. It goes to Carson. Carson back along the board. Drops it for Burr. Burr stepped in front of Tenorti. Now here's Cicerelli. Goes to Carson. Out to the left point. Lidstrom moves it across. York is open for a shot. Tipped over the top of the glass. And out of play. Now, once the Wings got it out of that traffic jam in deep, Mick, they got the opportunity off the stick of that young man, Jason York, drafted by the Red Wings back in the 1990 draft. Now around the end boards, it goes to Carson, back for Burr. He's hit immediately by Johnson. Now the North Stars get it free, and Rotten able to clear. Now Cicerelli trying to go to Burr. Burr has it in the corner, drops it back for Cicerelli. Cicerelli back to the line, Lipstrom drives a shot. Casey the save and there's no rebound. Casey with a hook on Cicerelli after Tenorti. Cicerelli and Burr. I've never seen so many fakes in the game of hockey in my life as I'm seeing today. It was Burr and Tenorti, really, that were going at it. Around the net, Burr had hit him from behind, and then Cicerelli got in there, and Casey tried to trip him up, and out of the net. Can't do much with it. Trouble with the two hands together, just shoves him, knocks him down, and he's calling cross-checking. Cross-checking the call against Probert. Tipped away by Sillinger. Sillinger able to clear the zone as he takes a hit from Churla. You got it! There's a steal by Eisenbar. Eisenbar tries a shot, missed the net. Courtno. With 15 seconds left of the Probert penalty. Rolls it across now. Here's Hatcher. That play is offside at the Detroit. Look out. You know, I, I'm not so sure that the change in the fighting rule is totally responsible for smaller players running people in this game today, but I'm, I'm sure that it has a part to do with it, without question. And this one's Gagne. Hitting Chase on. He hit him kind of from the side just as Chase on looked up there. He never saw him. Boy, it didn't look a whole lot different you know, than, but than what Drake did, you know, although with, Drake hit the. Without the fear of having to fight in this game, this is the kind of stuff that you get. And this is the kind of stuff that the NHL can't afford because you're going to end up with a very seriously injured player, and you don't need that. Very seldom does a player get hurt in a fight. There's Primo going after Gagne. There's nothing you can do. I mean, what are you going to do? The only thing you, you, you end up having to do when you get frustrated is you end up trying to retaliate the same way you're the only one. One time by Lindstrom, he missed it up high. That was about as good a setup as the Wings have had with the power play. Carson fakes the pass one way, still has it now in the circle. Goes back to the point for Eisman, sends it across. Lindstrom, quick shot, Casey the stop. Ryan Murray now with Steve Eiserman out of the point. He's going to go with four forwards here. Going to have as much offense out there as possible. Now the North Stars come up with a loose puck and Rotten chops it all the way down the ice. Kemper cross ice pass. Knocked out of mid here by McBee and he'll clear it. Check 
comes out of the box. Deshaun goes to Shepard. Shepard drives it in behind Casey. Eisenbart is there quickly, now Probert. Probert tries to chip it in front. Eisenbart, Probert taken down by Frost. Shepard drilled into the board by Hatcher. Probert along the end board. Sends it out in front, nobody there. But the wing's able to get a stick on it. Double lay out of the net, eight and a half remaining in the third. It's still a 4-2 Minnesota lead. Long pass, center ice for Probert. Tipped away. Now Russ Courtney. Plays it deep into the Red Wings zone. Wings come back with it. Kennedy. Goes to Sillinger. Sillinger was caught up in his feet. He slaps it back in behind the Minnesota goal. Now Ludwig. Goes up the glass with it. It's off the skate of McPhee. Chopped up by Sillinger. Kennedy there as well. Nobody can see if he got a stick on it. Off the stick of Carson. He has it back. Carson. Looking to go to Burr, goes to Cicerelli. It's off of his stick, picked up by Carson. Carson ties up the Minnesota player. Cicerelli knocks it loose. Now Tenorti drives it around. Jason York, good job holding it in. Drives it back to Burr. Burr goes to Carson. No, tipped away by Gavin, and it gets by Racine. York goes back to Cicerelli, tips it into the Minnesota zone. Tenorti backhands it, but not out. Racine held it in. Now it bounces over the glass and out of play. It's way up high and should not come into play. It was Tenorti jumped up to get Sean Burr in behind goalie John Casey. Look at Tenorti looking. Look at the look on him. The tongue sticking out, the teeth yeah. showing, and whatever teeth he's got. Was Hatcher tied up Burr there? Burr saw coming. Not much he could do to get out of the road. He bounced up. That's what you call taking a hit to make a play. John Burr will never bail out of there. When he can make a play even with somebody bearing down on top of him. North Stars are back at full strength. Here comes Chase up. Dumps it deep into the Minnesota zone. Eyes of our tied up Ellick. Ludwig was there. A clean play by McCrimmon, but this kid Craig has played the kind of game that he's going to have to pay for some of the things he's done. I think this is a direct result of the new fighting rules. Because that's the way players will have to retaliate. Nobody wants to see that. Well, if the rules are intended to make players not to retaliate, they're not going to happen. Now, see what Craig did there. He put the stick right in the back of the head of McCrimmon. McCrimmon took him down. He figured I didn't get him good enough. Primo's gone for the night. Craig's gone for the night. Well, these two teams meet again in case you're checking your calendar a week from Saturday. Check that two weeks from Saturday, December the 19th, the game that will televise on Fox 50. Driven by Shodine, hit the post to the left of Chevrolet. Held in now by Tenorti. Tenorti goes to Madano. Madano sends it cross ice. Shodin out to Tenorti. Tenorti down to Madano. Madano snaps it in deep. Goal mount pass. Churla couldn't chop it out of midair. Now here's McVee. McVee out to the line for Tenorti. Churla setting up in front of him. Chevrolet. Now the shot tips a rebound. Chevrolet somehow stopped McVee on that backhand opportunity. To keep it at 4-2 with 2.41 left on the clock. Now, Big Tenorti just decided to go to the front of the net. Mike McPhee can't believe he couldn't get it up over Shovel Day. And Churla camped up in front of the net there. That thing was deflected, hit Shovel Day in the shoulder and dropped down right McPhee's stick. Mike McPhee, a longtime performer for the Montreal Canadiens. Cardinal tips it to Madano. Madano out near the line. Snaps it in deep. Dallin tried a goal mount pass that was deflected, I believe, by Chason. The pre ball minor penalty is over. Gallant comes out of the box. It's a one-man advantage for the North Stars. And the puck is loose. Casey immediately read it. And
streaks out there to clear it before Galant can get to it. Oh, oh look at that. It. Oh! It's in the net. Was it in? Oh, oh boy. boy. We're going to have a review here. Oh, boy. Did that cross the line? Stewart saying no. Boy, was that he's, darn he's close. He's going to talk to, to his referee, Ray Scapinello. They're not even going to look at it. I think Scapinello said it wasn't in. Oh, that was close. And, again, and the next question is, how'd the net get off? If the puck didn't go in first and it was the guys that were chasing it, watch this. Two sticks come together. I don't think it ever crossed no. the line. Doesn't look like it from that angle. Here's another angle look at it. This may tell us. It's Casey that knocks the net off. Hits the Minnesota stick. Yep. Yep, okay. Yep. That's a perfect replay of it. And that was just a great play by the Minnesota defenseman to dive out and he chipped the puck just outside the goal post and then Casey hit it and knocked it off the moorings. Well, now the question is have the uh, replay officials asked for it? Somebody threw a, uh, a mock championship oh. belt on the well, ice. Well, we'll see where the puck ends up. There's a the tip by the Minnesota stick. Casey crashing into the net. It's, a, it's the black tape with the stick that's in the back of the net. This is the best angle I think we have right here. Was that Madonna? I think, that reached out there and tipped it? That puck's going in the net. And he did tip it, it looked like, before the net was dislodged. Trying to send it across for Madonna, and they never got through. Bang it off the glass, out the center ice, and that's going to do it. It's been a big plus for the Kings. Curry over the hawk line, feeding Granado to the backhand, and a save by Wait. Rebound to the line, here's a shot, it's more! Tipped in by Luke Robitaille. Los Angeles has two players that top the pack for the Alka-Seltzer Plus, plus-minus award. Senses that Toronto is poised to make a jump in the standings. Cliff Fletcher came aboard. He he stabilizes. He's stabilizing the whole organization and the team, and uh, he's making uh, the organization very stable. And that helps out the players a lot down in the locker room when the uh, the organization is stable. From the manager to the coach, everybody knows uh, you know the realm of power where it's coming, and, and everything's very stable. Things are equally stable in goal with three solid goalies such as Rick Wamsley, Felix Potvin, and Grant Fuhr. Ice time can be tough to come by. Right now, I think it's fine. I mean, the team's winning, so that's basically what you want. Of course, Felix would like to play more, I'd like to play more, Rick would like to play more, so. I mean, that's a tough decision, but that decision's not up to us. That's up to Pat, so I think he's the one who has the tough decision. Brad still in my books is my number one, but uh, if we can blend a Felix in, we're talking about forwards or, or defensemen, young defensemen, learning how to play the game. I think Felix Podme has to learn how to play the game also at this level. There's one thing that people don't understand. You play at the NHL level, you learn at another level. And uh, if we can blend a player in slowly and make him understand a lot of things, it makes him a better player down the road. Potvin ranks among the league leaders in goals against average, but is still number two in Toronto. Well, I don't really mind right now. I'm still young and I'm only 21. And uh, every day they uh, they give me some tips and they help me a lot. Grant and Rick, they got a lot of experience and uh, they're a great guy too. So uh, And they're pretty good goalies. So, uh, I mean, it's helped me a lot and it's good to get a guy like that to help me. Also helping Toronto's cause is center Doug Gilmore. After acquiring him in a Big Ten player trade with Calgary last season, the Leafs have posted a plus 500 record. Toronto's latest addition, center John Cullen, is hoping to get his act together after encountering some tough times with his previous team, the Hartford Whalers. A lot of people put a lot of trust in me there. Uh, Eddie Johnson made the biggest trade there in their history there, and I, you know, I let him down, and uh, he takes more heat now than... And he's not even there, he takes more heat from me. So this year was probably the worst uh, 19 games of my life there, as far as being frustrated. And so uh, it was almost good for me to get out of there and uh, get, a, get a fresh start. Cullen will also have to adapt to the style of his new coach, the defensive-minded Pat Burns. I know how he how his teams play, playing in Hartford and playing Montreal a lot when Pat Burns was there. He, I get to know his style, but but then when you got to play play under it, it's, it's a little different because because what you're used to and. Uh, uh, you know, hopefully I can just get adjusted real quick because yeah, I know it works. Burns hopes to accomplish in Toronto what he did in Montreal. Pat's a master motivator of young talent with definite ideas on molding a team.
my friend Jacques Demers said they win a lot of hockey games because the guys know how to play the game and in their own end. Well, I think that's what you have to do. And uh, when I took over the Canadiens, one of the things that uh, Serge Chavard said is these guys are going to have to learn how to play hockey and see how they're going to be competitive three years down the road. And uh, when I did start in Montreal, I was there four years, and I think they're pretty competitive now, and they always were competitive. But uh, and, and that's what we're trying to do here in Toronto. Uh, everybody wants goals, goals, goals. But uh, I think what we have to do is we can't jump. We have to remember one thing, that the hockey game is still both ends of the rink. And we're going to have to learn how to play one end before we start really worrying about the other. All of which has helped make Toronto's Maple Leaf Gardens a more entertaining place to visit for the fans. I think what happens now down at Maple Leaf Gardens every time uh, a fan goes to the game in Toronto, the, the team has a legitimate chance to win the game. And I don't think you could say that in the past, where there were, there were games where we just weren't going to win. But uh, now with the way we're playing, and more importantly with the players we have, uh, we have more than a legitimate chance to win. So things are definitely on the upswing in, in the eyes of the fans of the Toronto Maple Leafs. And the Leafs continue to blossom as a legitimate playoff contender. Time for the outburst seven seasons of his career, weaving his magic with the New York Islanders, averaging 40-plus goals per season. Buffalo fans could only dream of what it would be like to have LaFontaine in a Sabres uniform. Then last October 25th, that dream came true when LaFontaine was traded. I traded our captain, Brent Sutter, to the Chicago Blackhawks. I also traded Pat LaFontaine to the Buffalo Sabres along with Randy Wood and defenseman Randy Hillier. Buffalo greeted LaFontaine with open arms, and it didn't take Pat long to show his new teammates that he'd fit in just fine. Sabres control, Bodger wrists it across to Howard, to goal about the score! Pat LaFontaine is welcome to Western New York. This season, LaFontaine has been on top of his game with 47 points, which ranks him among the NHL's elite. Wherever he goes, Pat's a big topic of conversation. And here in Buffalo, in typical Pat LaFontaine attitude as we know it, he loves it here, even the weather. Well, Pat LaFontaine is what you see, what you get. Every game, in and out, you know that he's a threat. And the Islanders are going to have to watch for him. He's going to love playing against them. One of the best game breakers in the league in Pat LaFontaine. This kid has scored uh, 40 goals or more five straight years well he's a quality little guy he plays uh, big he's got a big heart and he's aggressive so he's a quality guy and a quality player and you have to pay attention to him the Sabres are led by center Pat LaFontaine he has 33 points he is tied for second in the NHL in scoring LaFontaine is such an exciting player he's an explosive skater you're gonna notice him every time he hits the ice but with that speed he draws so many people to him he's opening up the room for his line mates they love playing with Pat LaFontaine and you'll love watching him play while the accolades are welcome, LaFontaine's concerns are clearly geared towards team accomplishments. It's impossible to ignore a player of Pat's obvious skills. Although only 27 years old, LaFontaine is in his 10th NHL season and has been around long enough to know that success doesn't necessarily hinge on personal achievements. It's very flattering to see, uh, um, but right now I'm going to take it one game at a time and What's exciting to me is that there's some chemistry building on this team. We're starting to uh, really come together, and uh, what's important right now is to continue to do well. Team success will breed individual success. But the Sabres are also well aware that LaFontaine is perhaps the most important piece of the puzzle and is capable of lifting Buffalo to new heights. I've been playing with Pat LaFontaine for, this will be my seventh year now, because I play with him with the New York Islanders, and he's, he's gotten better every year. He's a dominant player in the league. He can score at any point, at any time, and uh, that's what makes him a great player. And I think that he still has um, you know, better performances in front of him. If LaFontaine does continue to improve, Sabre fans might dream of loftier goals. Buffalo guarded its net well, but Montreal's persistence paid off late in the first period as they relentlessly applied the heat. Savard taking it away, Desjardins pulled down by LaFontaine, saved by Pupa, rebound in front. Denny Savard again setting it up for LeBeau. Savard scores! Denny Savard worked that play from A to Z.
As any Canadians fan will tell you, the letter S should be emblazoned on the uniform of goaltender Patrick Waugh, signifying saves and stick work. Patrick stopped 23 Buffalo shots and delivered a beauty of a pass. Presley clears. 7.32 remaining in this wild second period. Vincent Dampus to step on the bow. He scores. Montreal maintained their first place lead in the Adams division with a 3-0 win. It was also the first shutout of the season for Patrick Waugh, the 19th of his career. Meanwhile, that same night, the two Adams division teams trying to chip away at Montreal's lead faced each other, Quebec and Boston. Brian Sutter's team hoped to move past the Nordiques into second place. And right back comes Rosicka. Rosicka over the line, in this is Hines, shot, rolls, in, a score! Hines, score, sent in by Rosicka, and the Bruins lead 3-2. In the third period, Quebec scored a fluke goal when Bruins defenseman Glenn Featherstone accidentally deflected the puck into the net. But with minutes remaining, Boston redeemed itself. Juno coming up over the line. Holding. In. Oh, scores! Leach the goal! Leach from Juno! The Bruins lead 4-3. to three. And that was the final as Boston defeated their Adams division rivals. Sutter's squad won for the fifth time in seven games. Time now for the point. Keeps it in and centers it out in front. Balloon to Whitney. Scores! Ray Whitney with his first NHL goal as the Sharks find the power. Hockey fans, NHL Home Video presents 50 Great Goals. See hockey's greatest moments, greatest moves, and hockey's greatest victories all jammed up the visiting team much either. Nor does Wayne Mesmer's stirring rendition of the national anthem. Through the years, Steve Larmer has also become an important part of that tradition. His 827 consecutive games played is the longest current streak in the NHL. By 1985, he had had two 40-goal seasons after starting his career as a Calder Trophy winner. It was just the beginning of a long string of achievements. Larmer battles his way to center now, got it to Savard over the line. Savard working to Larmer right in front, shooting, he scores! Savard! Send in Larmer in an excellent effort by Larmer who was hooked three times at center ice. Pulled away from the check, scores a shorthander. Looks like he's been out there forever. Here's Wilson, a long shot to save rebound. Larmer, he scores! Steve Larmer picked up the rebound. And yet another goal scoring milestone in 1990. Now Larmer gets it into the blue zone with a shot. He scores! Steve Larmer, his 300th career goal. More recently, Larmer fell into a bit of a slump. After starting the season strong, Steve hadn't scored in 13 straight games. A frustrating run of bad luck, to say the least. Matteau alongside. Ronick fed in front, Larmer, oh, and he's rough. But Larmer kept firing away. Some good news for the Blackhawks came during a tough 5-2 loss to the Vancouver Canucks when Larmer broke out of his slump. Larmer over the Vancouver line, his drive blocked at the defense by Merzen and deflects wide. Then Goulet center, Larmer, he scores! That seemed to put Steve back on the right track as he ended his longest goal-scoring drought ever. When the Blackhawks flew into Edmonton, Larmer went wild. Now a misplay between Ranford and Manson, a shot, they score! It was dug out of the corner by the Hawks and Steve Larmer, as he was falling, converted Rob Brown's centering pass. Rebound, Glenn kicked it to the corner. Sutter is after it there. Red Sutter walks in front, centering, they score! Steve Larmer, two quick goals and three goals in his last two periods of play. And the slump is over, the Blackhawks lead two to one. They won it 8-1, to one, and Larmer registered a career-high six points on two goals and four assists. He continued his red-hot run a few nights later with a big game against the Calgary Flames. Steve Larmer continues his torrid pace. They call Larmer Grandpa, but he looked anything but old against Calgary, scoring three goals. 
Here's Smith in the deep spot, a long drive. Fired it just wide of the near post. Rebound, Talio, centered one, deflected to Larmer. He scores! And Larmer continues to roll along for the Hawks. Steve's third career hat trick and a 5-2 victory for Chicago. Grandpa's feeling just fine. Career goal number 100, becoming the first former Soviet player to reach that NHL milestone. Here comes Ronick. He's got Telios with him. Ronick cutting in. Tried to center it. Telios, a shot. He scores! How did that go in? Chris Chelios of the Hawks with the 100th of his career. And since December 8th of 90, when Gaetan Duchesne has scored, Minnesota is 22-1-2. He came through. Red Wings are now 0 for 4 on the power play in the game. Who's pucking it went in! Deflected in by Tony Avanti! The Rangers' Sergei Nemchinov took matters in hand during the third period. Sergei took this one all by himself. Knocked away by Nemchinov, breaks down the middle, pushes it ahead, gets to the puck, Nemchinov shoots, he scores! What an effort by Sergei Nemchinov to give the Rangers a 4-3 lead. New York's Mike Richter withstood the challenge in goal as Detroit outshot the Rangers 42-24. Richter was strong to the end, and New York held on for the win. Ever wonder how a goalie like Mike Richter stays in shape? We asked professional strength and conditioning coach Keith Sedro to visit Mike for an inside look. Do you find um, the, the difference between sets and reps between off-season and in-season? Will you tone it down from your off-season program to your in-season program? Yeah, in-season, I'll have lower uh, amount of weight, number mm -hmm. one, and uh, higher repetitions. What kind, what kind of sets and reps are we talking about when you're doing these exercises? Well, during the year as maintained, it might be just be three sets, and it might be 15 to 20 reps. So, so it's high reps. So Absolutely. That, you know, usually I find the repetitions dictate the weight, the amount of weight you use. That's People exactly want right. to use heavy yeah. weight. They say, oh, I'm anti-heavy weight, but the reps dictate it. If you want to do 15 reps, you're not going to use 10, 12 plates on this. No, but if, if you consider it again, I want to be as strong in the third period as I am in the first. I have to be able to, to kick whatever weight I'm kicking again and again and again. If I'm slow in the third period, it's pure and simple, I can lose the game. Yeah. And so uh, I want to be able to have that same explosiveness throughout. Kind of watch up with a drive. Richter, the pad save. Left in front. Carpenter gets a shot away. And again, Richter. Here's Jones, and Richter tried to get a stick on it. You have to train for specifically what you do. I think too many young guys train maybe as football players and whatnot. It's fantastic to be strong, but you have to have that strength in the third period just as much as you do in the first, and that's endurance. Um, I don't have to have an incredible amount of upper body strength. Having some is always good, but I want to train efficiently. I want to make sure my legs are my, my key. That's that's my uh, um, engine that's going to get me from one side of the net to the other. If they're weak, I can't do it. Mike Richter was able to take away the low side of the net as Lindros moves right on it, and Richter, who has great lateral movement, was able to move to his left and stay with Eric Lindros. What do you focus on when you're doing your breathing, staying out in front, to nose to knee? Uh, what, what's uh, breathing, um, I, I want to make sure that I'm, I'm not bouncing because, right. I mean, uh, anytime you're stretching and you take it too far, you're damaging the muscle. I mean, there's a happy medium. You don't want to do it too little where you're not being effective, but if you're doing too much... So you what you're trying to do is relax more than strain and get, get your nose to down to the knee. Absolutely, and uh, I think a lot of people realize the importance of stretching before they go out for an event. Right. You don't want to pull that muscle, but as far as maintaining flexibility throughout the year, it's probably more important to stretch afterwards. Stretch you just have a hard workout, and you walk away from the gym, and you have that nice tight right. feeling, and that's good, but you really have to take maybe 20 minutes, half an hour even to right. stretch out. It takes a real discipline to say, I'm coming off the ice. You may have won or may have lost. That might dictate how much you do. Absolutely. So I think it really boils down to listening to your own body and for flexibility, sure. cardiovascular training. It's just discipline. Yeah. Thanks for being with me. Get ready for our top five goals of the week. There they come now. Bore, two on one over the line. Bore in, centered at Nedved. He scores. It was Gino Ajik, not Nedved. Gino Ajik with his second goal of the game off a beautiful dish from Pavel Bore. Five nothing now. Even strength. Brzezinska, he drags wide. Trouble. Bartolo. Stars with two goals early in the third, taking a 3-2 lead. 
Boy, was that nice. Madonna and Courtnall. Courtnall to Madonna. He scores. What a play. Unbelievable. Give and goes all over the ice with speed. Look at this pass and look at this shot. Kevin onto the Capitals line. Coming against Hatcher, dropping to Lemieux with that big uh, play. Fakes a shot, now it's a go. He shoots and scores. Mario Lemieux gives the Penguins a 3-1 lead. Oh, by Sam, a drink and get it. Dog 1-2. Now to keep Kachuk. Trying to break through. He does. He scores. What an effort by Keith Kachuk. And it's a one-goal game. Oh, boy. What a brilliant play for a young man who basically is a rink rat. He just loves to play hockey. <laughs> That's all for now. Take a shot with us next time on Power Stick Hockey Week.